Welcome everybody to the first inaugural episode of the Papalotti Games show. And I have no idea what I'm doing. So, and, and that will become very apparent and very clear here uh, very shortly as we uh, get started. Uh, tonight we're, we're going to be doing uh, Teeth. Yes, actually Teeth uh, for uh, the game we're working on. Jack Hunter and Shadows of the World is the title of the game that we're currently making. And we are going to be modeling some teeth in Maya LT 2017. And we are going to do it from beginning to end. And I'm going to basically go about doing it. It's not gonna be really like a tutorial. You're just gonna see how I do it. And we're going to, uh, get started here and I won't waste any more time and I apologize at the very beginning of the video I tend to babble as you will I'm sure find out um, I'm also uh, another side disclaimer here um, I'm also finding out that YouTube is very 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 strict on uh, music when it comes to doing live shows uh, it's not quite the same as it is over on Twitch and so I ran a test the other day <laughs> and I was trying to use my headphones, my trusty headphones here um, from Symphonized and uh, great headphones, by the way, you can get them on Amazon. No, I'm not getting paid um, by them to uh, promote their product. I just really like them. And uh, I was listening to them and everything was fine. And I, I took a quick break, got up went in the other room, came back, and uh, about 20 minutes later, I got an email saying, you know, you, you fringed on copyright, and it turned out, I went back and watched the video, and it was the music still playing in my headphones, laying over here, and it's about three feet from the mic, the mic's over here, and uh, that's all it took. And, and they flagged it right away. And so um, I've been looking into it, trying to figure out what in the world I can do. I, I know that I'm sure plenty of you out there are saying, hey, what about public domain music? Or just bail on YouTube and just go, go to Twitch. You won't have this problem. And so I, I looked up public domain. I, I went out there and I said, hey, public domain music. And if you go through Google, you're going to get a somewhat intelligent response. You're going to get public domain music. You know, if somebody's been dead for so long or if someone releases some kind of music uh, for the public to consume because they believe in, in free media for the masses, that's out there. If you <laughs> go to a music service like iTunes or Spotify and you look and you do a search for public domain, you're gonna find out very quickly that um, public domain is like a rap group, I think. And like it's spelled perfectly, it's not like some weird, you know, public with a K or anything like that. It's public domain and it's not the music I was looking for. And the music I did find, it was actually, um, on there's several websites you can actually watch or listen to music streaming or you can uh, download it and play it back and typically it's classical music of course Chopin, Mozart, Bach you know your, your standard composers um, along with other many many other uh, composers from more than 150 years ago uh, that of course <laughs> Are available and the funny thing about that is I thought I could go back to Spotify and play anything Chopin because I'll listen to Chopin Tchaikovsky Holtz I mean there's a lot of different I, I'm all over the board except country music and I hope that doesn't offend anyone out there but a it's not for me basically anything else from house dub electronic punk uh, gosh uh, alternative grunge 
you name it, all the way through rap music, all the way back to pop music, you know, if, if you saw my playlist, you would just laugh your ass off, because it's ridiculous. Um, but I thought, hey, I could go and listen to some Chopin out there on Spotify. And it turns out, YouTube flags it anyway, because they look at it as, hey, this is copyrighted because it's a modern, uh, what did they say? It's, it's a modernizing of that music. And I'm like, well, how can they do that? That doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I'm, I'm not in a copyright law or anything like that. Um, I understand the principles of it and I just don't understand the ins and outs of how, you know, you can go and play someone's music that they wrote that's in public domain. And as soon as you play it verbatim, you own the copyright to you playing it. I don't get that. It's basically like, hey, if Gears of War ever went public domain and I made Gears of War and I called it Gears of War and it was Gears of War, would that be cool? I don't think Cliff Belinsky would like that very much. Um, or anyone at Epic or any, anyone else associated with Gears of War past and present with Microsoft and everything. So, um, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get started, uh, until I find out some kind of music situation. There's no music. So if you just want to, uh, see me flap my lips and want to listen to some music while I do this, totally cool. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I'm just going to, uh, get started here. All right. Uh, again, like I already said, we're going to be doing some teeth. And where is my folder here? I have some examples here. And let me bring this into view here. So uh, some of you may know who this person is. For those who do not, this is Syndrome from Pixar's The Incredibles. And uh, I wanted to point out Teeth. You know, the, the kind of vibe that it, I have going right now for Jack Hunter is is Pixar related. Like the aesthetic of it is is gonna be Pixar um, inspired, right? Homage to Pixar. I've always wanted to make uh, an animated film based off of the characters that I'm currently working with. I've been working on it for ten years. Oh gosh, wow, I'm old. Uh, since 2000, like 14 years. And it's gone through different iterations of it, but it's basically the same thing. It's it's uh, kind of honoring my grandfather uh, being a pilot and whatnot. He, uh, he was a serviceman and uh, he was like the guy I looked up to growing up all my life. And uh, I wouldn't be the man I am today without him. So anyway, the idea was eventually, or originally, it was going to be a grandfather and a grandson were sitting on a park bench, and it was like a minute long animation, and I've got it somewhere, I'm not going to play it right now, but it was basically, it started that out, it was just a, this emotional piece of them sitting on a park bench looking up, and you can tell that he's thinking of, you know, the old days, and it's like at an air show, and it was something where the, the the grandson could see he was upset, you know, thinking about the old days, and they ran off. Eventually, that turned into a completely different story that I won't really touch on here because I hope one day I'll, I'll actually be able to make this, which was titled Glory Days at the time. And Glory Days is still there. The, the title of the game, you know, originally started as Glory Days because it's been transitioning from this film into this game. So, the uh, the the whole point of of that story was another grandfather grandson story. Um, and I just the more I developed it, the more I liked this character that was always trying to find a way to live in the past. Again, I won't expose what the story was here 
but he was finding ways at ripe old age of 80 of trying to like relive his glory days um and the punchline of the story is fantastic i i still think it's fantastic to this day and basically i i just kept finding that i was not going to be able to make this film so anyway um time passed and 2012 no 2013 finally decided hey I, I think I can find a way to make this a game. My friend Colin and I, we, we started Papalotti Games, and we released a few games out there. You can find them on our website at papalottigames.com. You can see some of the trailers we have on our YouTube channel. And uh, basically, we're at a point right now where it's we're kind of done making mobile games, and we want to make a, a true PC Based game hopefully released for Steam maybe for consoles who knows that's not important right now because we don't even have a game what we want to focus on though is is making a 3d action adventure game um, at least at least I do right now because um, him and I were both going through some life changes he's in Boston I'm here in Cincinnati and basically uh, you know, we're going through job stuff, we're going through personal stuff, and I'm I'm saying, hey, I want to try to do this. I at least want to make a demo available to the public to be able to, to get the attention out there to say, hey, you know, is this something that, you know, I should continue to pursue past a playable demo? Because really, you got to, you know, as fast as possible for, you, for anyone, you know, trying to make games, um, you know, the fastest you can create it and get it in front of someone to play the the better off you are because you're going to be able to find out right away if it's something that you should continue spending time on or you should just drop and move on to the next topic and so hoping to create a demo very quickly is a good thing now he's off again he started a new job he's working on a really awesome idea of a game uh, which i will not disclose at this point again it's it's really really cool I think um, he's, he's got a good punchline at the end he's got a good build up to it and uh, I, I, I'm there for him if he needs me you know for concept art and things like that but he's doing his thing I'm doing my thing and this is it you know so um, I, I always wanted to make a Pixar film want to make a Pixar style game so this is why we're staring at a picture of Syndrome I know I went way way around but I got us back so anyway, Pixar has always been, you know, story first, things like that. But they've also realized that doing things caricatured of, um, it's a caricature of our real life, basically. And, and you can see that here looking at this image of Syndrome. You know, the, the hair looks awesome. Uh, he's got, you know, modeling all throughout and that's modeling, like M-O-T, not M-O-D. Modeling all throughout his skin, you know, for, for the texture, for the shader. Um, you know, he's got imperfections everywhere. And his teeth are not perfect. They're not chiclets. You know, so many people out there think that um, you, you, <laughs> you take a cube, you bevel the edges, um, you know, you smash it, and boom, shove it up in a big, bulky mess of them. You know, call it gums, and there you go, you have teeth. That is not what we're going for, and that is not what Pixar does. I mean, just look at it. They look awful. I mean, they're not as bad as um, other countries that have a bad stigma for having not great teeth. Um, I, I don't have great teeth, uh, but Buddy here, Syndrome, he, uh, he's got great teeth as far as I'm concerned because they're not symmetrical, they're asymmetric. Um, they have imperfections in them and, and that's great. That's, that's what you want. Uh, another image here, which is great. Uh, this is Edna, also from The Incredibles. Um, I, I tried to find, I, I did a Google search for uh, Pixar smile, Pixar laugh, Pixar teeth. Um, because I just wanted to get the 
you know, the whole idea here, Pixar knows what, what they're doing. Now I'm sure DreamWorks and Sony Imageworks and um, I'm, tons of other companies out there that, that make animated films, they do that. You know, they, they, uh, they see that the, that the, uh, the imperfections are, are, are what really counts. I mean, um, I remember Brad Bird talking about, you know, he, he wanted to simplify the features because that's not what was important. It wasn't the fact that, you know, you do every single loop in a year, you know, you just have the year, it can be flat, but because we associate, we, our brains know what a year looks like. We don't even think twice about it. We know that's an year. It looks great. We don't even think about it. And if it looked weird, if it had a pine cone sticking through it or something like that, I'm not talking like, like a stud or something. I'm talking like literally just like sticking through it. I don't know why I said pine cone, but you know, we would know, Hey, that looks weird that, you know, but we don't think about stuff like that. We don't think, Hey, look at all the detail missing. You know, when we watch these films or we see images of them, we don't think about that. And so Edna hears big old smile. She's got like a uh, Lawrence Fishburne kind of gap at the bottom. Um, and, and that's, that's all we care about. Nothing straight. All her teeth are angled. Um, you know, and, and this is just another example of what we're going for. Um, same thing here. You know, you can see they're angled, they're overlapping. Like just right here, you can tell they're overlapping, which means the tooth is in front, tooth is going back. They realize this, Pixar does. So, um, and we are definitely not doing teeth like this. That whole punchline, I, I was supposed to do that picture first, but that's okay. You get the point. Not these teeth. Those those would be fairly easy, actually. If you look, um, you know, just a triangle and put a line there. Um, so, so anyway, uh, this is what we're we're going for right here. We're we're shooting for imperfections, asymmetry. Um, something that's that uh, you can look at and not think twice about. It it just looks fine. It looks normal to us, and how our brains uh, perceive how a human being is supposed to look. So, I'm I'm going to uh, move this off to another monitor here, and I'll just uh, pull up Syndrome over here, and just kind of zoom in a little bit. I'm not gonna copy him, I'm literally using him as reference here. There we go, all right, buddy, you see there. He's buddy, go home, buddy, you know, for the <laughs> for those that uh, have seen Incredibles. Um, great film, probably my favorite film, obviously, I'm quoting lines from it, um, animated-wise. Yeah, animated. Not traditional animated, just animated. Anyway, all right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I, I've posted some pictures uh, on Patreon, on Twitter, social media. I, I'm really lazy when it comes to Instagram. I really need to find just something that works for me that just says, you know, I'm going to post everything. I can basically do that with Twitter. Um, Twitter will go to Facebook, and I'm sure I could probably set it up um, to, uh, to go elsewhere. Let me just take a second. Uh, looks like we have two people watching. I hope that's not me counting as watching. I, I don't think they would. Well, we can find out here because it looks like there's a stream over here open too and another window. So I'm just gonna say hello if anyone, hello to whoever is watching. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. All right. Now, for me, and uh, my, now this is my LT uh, 2017. I don't have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to spend on the full Maya version. And uh, frankly, this does the trick. You know, this, this software package is made for game development. And a lot of uh, people don't realize that. They're still using Studio Max, which is fine. There's not, don't get me wrong. 
Studio Max is fine. Moto's fine. Blender's okay. Um, Blender fanboys are, are mad right now. Um, Cinema 4D, I, I don't know. Um, but as far as modeling for me, this is what works. I've always stuck with it. been using it for 12 years, not LT. I've been using Maya for 12 years. So um, they keep changing stuff, so I don't know everything. Anyway, um, so this is LT 2017, and it's not a student version, if anyone was wondering. Although, if you are a student, you can get that from um, autodesk.com for free, as long as you have a student ID, um, credentials, whatever, you can register your school. Uh, all right, so anyway, the LT 2017 has everything I need to do modeling, because basically I'll do modeling in here, and then I'll take this and I'll UV it in Hedis UV layout. Or if it's simple enough, I'll just do the UV in here. Typically though, almost every model I'll take over to Hedis and I'll do it over there. And then from there, I will actually um, either go back in here if that's all I need was UV because I really don't like UV in my, um, after I get all the layouts done, I'll either finish it in here and it's ready to go over to like Substance, Quixel, whatever package you, you prefer. Um, if, uh, if I'm actually like for this guy here, for Jack, what I did was I started with a 3D concept sculpt in ZBrush. Then I took him over to Top of Gun to read to apologize. And then I, I brought him in here now and I, uh, I do a lot of tweaking after that because it's, you know, going from a concept to an actual model, um, it, you gotta re topologize. You know, you could try using Z remesher depending on what uh, the object is. Uh, I, I've tried uh, doing that in here and I, I know everybody's like, get it to the teeth because who doesn't want to watch me model some teeth? Um, but, I just wanted to bring up real quick in case anybody was wondering here. Let's see here. I thought I had it in here. Is it? It's this one. Oh, that's right. My scale is ZBrush to Maya scale. I'm. I don't even bother for some reason. Twenty-seven. <laughs> if anybody's wondering, uh, twenty-seven seems to work for me. Um, so. This is what a high mesh looks like coming out of ZBrush. And basically, it would break it down, break it down, break it down. So you would have, um, so um, you would have, you know, your edge loops um, spaced equally. But the problem is that it doesn't create the edge loops you want for animation. You know, you want nice clean edge loops going around your your orbit you, you know you want nice clean edge loops for for mouth shapes that way doing something like a smile it's very very easy to do versus trying to do a smile that i mean this is just like flat planar grid going across here uh, not fun trying to do uh, blend shapes and animation so um do you, Z remesh is great, you know, for some things. I typically find that organic objects is not something it's great for. And I'm sure uh, if you want to sound off below in the comments to this video, let me know what you think. I'll love to hear what you have to say. So anyway, let's, let's get to it. Uh, I know I keep saying that, but we're really going to do it this time. Now, these I just made <laughs> very quickly for a screenshot for our patreon page for uh, our patrons that um, support me on this project I have a patreon page set up I'll get to that later that's not the the important thing right now I was simply trying to to say hey I did these real quick now again these are super quick and uh, I knew I was gonna hide them uh, as I was preparing for today's show I was like okay well I just need the overall look of it you know they don't look quite right you know as far as chiclets I should probably say what a chiclet is uh it is a gum 
Yeah, it's a gum, right? Uh, let me uh, let me pull up a page for those that uh, don't know what a chiclet is. <laughs> this is a chiclet. Um, and I'm not clicking on images. I thought about it for a second. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, that's the computer one. Hold on. Uh, chiclet based off of the gum. Let's see here. Gum. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so when I say chiclet, this is what I'm talking about. And um, for the longest time, studios use chiclets for teeth. Especially early on, it was easy. It was easier on the computer, easier on calculations and rendering to simply do a cube with a few bevel edges. Um, now we can do so much more. So that's a chiclet. Anyway, let me go ahead and bring up syndrome again. There we go. So how would I start making the teeth? Well, it's gonna be pretty straightforward and there's a couple of different ways you can do it in Maya. There's, uh, this is called the shelf. And if you wanted to use the shelf, you could just click on a cube and it creates it at the origin. I currently have my grid off. If you ever loaded Maya, it would come with a grid on. Uh, the grid is somewhat annoying, but I'll leave it on for for those that uh, prefer to, to have the grid on. So anyway, so this is a cube that's created, you know, right here. And you can come over here to the inputs and adjust the size if you wanted to uh, adjust the subdivision, how many subdivisions are, are being generated, height, width, depth. Again, I'm not giving a tutorial, I'm just saying what, what's up. Typically, uh, you know, I will, you'll, you'll see me use the hotbox from time to time. I'm used to giving tutorials and whatnot, so I, I'll come up and actually use menus too, so if you see me do that, so basically, let's just start with a cube because that's gonna be, basically it's, it's cube modeling is, is the way we're gonna go here. So let's say I was just gonna do the first one. The first one is, is pretty straightforward. Now, because this is for a game, I have to think about polygon count. And polygon count is something that's very important when you're doing games. Uh, at least I know that. Now I know, I put a disclaimer on here saying, I don't know anything about making games. I know a lot about games. I know a lot about nothing. I know a little about a lot. Uh, but one of the things that you have to worry about, and especially when I started in, in all of this, uh, was like a character. When I started doing all this a long time ago, character over 3000 polygons was insane if that gives you any inclination. That's like PlayStation 1. PlayStation 1 was like 800 to 1200 polygons, I think, for standard 3D character. And then it went up to like three to five, no wait, three. It was around three for PS2. And then you got anywhere between five and 10 for PS3. And now you can have characters up to like 20,000 polygons, depending on how the rendering set up, um, the lighting engines, all that stuff. It's insane. Uh, but because I started doing all this at such an early age, um, no, not early age, at such an earlier time versus today's games, it is like stuck with me big time. And that's a good thing though, because you constantly have to think about your, your draw calls now. You just, anything being rendered on the screen is, it takes up CPU, it takes up memory, and you have got to think about, if it's gonna be shown, that's fine. If it's not gonna be shown, it needs to go. <laughs> that's That's basically, uh, the gist of it. So right away, I'll delete the top, I'll delete the back because this is either gonna be above the, the lip line or if you're gonna do like a big smile, like Buddy here, you're gonna see, you're gonna see the gums. And so the the front of the teeth, the, the side, if you have a bevel coming, uh, I don't know why I'm doing this. I wish I had a big giant tooth I could hold up. 
Um, I'm almost out of the water. Um, I gotta start working on those ums. Come on, Toastmasters. Anyway, the the corner here, you can have this where you can double these edges uh, when when you have all of your sides here, you can battle, bevel them. But if you start optimizing too soon, you won't be able to do things. Like right here, I will actually slide this over so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Let me just zoom back in and come here, buddy. There you go. All right. Yes, I know I could do an image plane. I, it takes too long. All right, there we go. So you can see right here, we're already starting to get that shape just by doing that one bevel on that edge. Now, if we were gonna to continue to try to make his tooth, you're gonna to have to think about our, our tooth in three dimensions. So it's gonna be thicker at the top here. It's gonna to start to taper down here like so. You can kind of see that here. And we can start to just kind of move edges into place, kind of where they need to go. Now, we could go, well, I have my own. So, select contiguous edges, something like that. Probably not this one. Nope. Wrong shortcut, bevel. See, and it's gonna come down, it's gonna smooth here, and and it's almost gonna meet down here. So what we can do is collapse this edge here. Something like that. Again, we're thinking about games where, if this was a, just gonna be a still 3D render, or was gonna be an animated film character, that you're gonna see their teeth a lot, then I would probably do, do more, but we're not gonna worry about that. So let's see here. Uh, okay. We can go ahead and start to bring this in. Again, even from the side, you're still going to see so much of the tooth, which is why you can delete certain sides of it. So it's coming down. That looks fine. You probably raise this up a little bit, something like that. Again, you're not gonna see these faces. We can go ahead and get rid of those. And just look at this again. Gonna make sure these are centered. There we go. Alright. Something like that. And Soften that. What we can do is turn off wireframe. And I'm just, just trying to get a look at it. It's literally only 11 polygons. I mean, we could probably think about doing um, some LOD work here, whereas we can make one for, for the character in game. Maybe the character is going to talk and smile during the conversation that happens in game in the engine uh, versus doing a 3D render of him for like a box art, poster, promotional image, something like that where he's smiling. Of course, he's more like a debonair, dashing kind of character. So, you know, he's got the, you know, you're not going to see a lot of teeth when he does it, you know, and I probably look silly um, anyway let's go ahead and see how many polygons we can do here without pissing it off too much um, yeah I don't like any of that and we're gonna go ahead and collapse this that looks okay I'll just do a quick test see how bad this looks All right, just gonna crease this. Something like 
take that. I'll probably take this off. This too. Oh, no, not that one. All right. It's going to have some thickness. Let me move this vert here. Just in. Just a bit. Something like that. This seems to be in a curve over here. I'm trying to see the difference. Oh, I'm being silly. Hold on. I think. Yeah, there we go. Again, we can just you can move stuff around. Just trying to keep the general shape. Yeah, it's not bad. Do um, put a hard edge down here. Make sure it stays clean. Something like that. Um, the creasings don't really matter if you're not in. Um, if you're not doing a smooth preview. So. Let's go ahead and get some history off. But that's that's basically how you can do it now. If you wanted to come in here and actually add some some detail, because it looks like he's got like this chip thing going on here, you could do something like this, and then just start moving some stuff around. Move those verts like that and, it, and, and it's gonna be imperfections like that that really uh, are, are gonna sell the the nature of, of what you're working on asymmetry you know sure go through and make you know the model it's always quicker to, to make one side mirror it and, and you're good to go uh, the the factor that everyone keeps missing is you have to go back after you mirror it. You think you're done, it looks good, but it's gonna have that uncanny look about it. You gotta go back in, you gotta add that asymmetry in there. Oh, making it for a living. Ah, uh, I'm making it for a living. Uh, you could say that. Um, I, uh, I'm currently trying to do independent gaming right now on my own. Um, I have my startup studio, two guys, uh, I'm in Boston or he's in Boston. I'm in Cincinnati. We're kind of doing our thing, TJMG. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is, this is sort of what I'm trying to do. Oh, okay. That's cool. That's cool. How long have you been doing that? trying to clean up these creases that I was using for preview there we go so again the uh, I used to yeah yeah um, I've just been using Maya for a long time since like 2001 2002 the option was there to use studio max um, I think uh, I, I've always been kind of wanting to do the different thing as far as uh, anything goes. And, and it's kind of been that way with my family too. Like my, my cousin, he diehard uh, Lightwave guy. And um, he tried to convince me to use Lightwave and I'm just like, no, no, I gotta use something else. Everybody kept telling me, use Studio Max. That's what all the games use. And I'm just like, uh, yeah, but you know, I wanna get into film and animation. And at the time, Maya was starting to to integrate into film studios. And so I was just like, hey, I wanna do that, I wanna to go to SCAD 
um, which is Savannah College of Art and Design in Savannah, Georgia. And I was just like, I, I need to learn this. This is what they're starting to, to use, you know, for off the shelf software. A lot of the film studios were starting to just grab my and use it. And so I said, I want to learn it if I had the opportunity. And I did, it was this or Studio Max. But when I went to school um, 12 years ago, they were teaching at my school, they were teaching Studio Max from almost like a CAD perspective. There was like, oh, here's AutoCAD, but you can also use this program that's sort of like AutoCAD to like make movies and games. Because when I went to school, being able to go out there and get an instructor, uh, get a professor who actually knew or knows what the hell they're doing um, didn't exist really back then. I mean, for the first couple of years that that uh, we had 3D animation at the school I went to, we actually had somebody who worked for like Boeing and Lockheed Martin, uh, aeronautical engineer, come in and teach it. And that's, it's because the closest thing they could find for someone that lived in the area was someone that worked with a program called Katia. And it was 3D and I said, hey, here's books. Do you think you can take this and teach it to these kids? And he said, yes. And it, what people have, what up and coming people have uh, going to school now versus when I went to school, totally different ball game today. Um, so, I mean, if basically if you're a developer, um, if you're not working, you're teaching. And if you're not teaching, you're working. Sometimes you're doing both, depending on what studio you're in or if you live in San Francisco, if you live West Coast, East Coast, very expensive places to live. And, you know, I, I lived in Boston and, you know, my wife and I, we were paying like three grand a month for a two bedroom apartment. It was ridiculous. So, you know, you're teaching and you're working, you know? So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, luckily I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm in a place where um, there's not much of anything when it comes to, to uh, big studios. There's a lot of independent people around the area where I'm at that are making games and have released games. We, we have a, a somebody um, uh, the name of the studio just does it escapes me um, but they're they're working on a, a project resurgence. It was a Kickstarter um, a successful Kickstarter and they're working on it. They're here in the area and uh, we have uh, a bunch of people up in um, Columbus and Cleveland um, that are releasing games, successful Kickstarters. Again, uh, today is so different when it comes to schools that uh, you know you can go and, and have someone who knows what the hell they're doing teach you uh, and, and give you proper feedback on the spot instead of having someone that used to work at Boeing, you know, that worked on airplanes and it's like, uh, I think that's right. I think that's what the book says. <laughs> so, yeah, well, good luck to you. Hope that works out. Studio Max is, uh, I mean, they've integrated a lot of stuff inside um, Maya here. This, uh, this modeling toolkit is very, very uh, Studio Max to me uh, because, I mean, I've used Studio Max a couple times just to view models that I've downloaded uh, off the web just to, you know, they're a Max format or something. I've had a load of Studio Max and when they started integrating this, I was like, oh, they're starting to do the, you know, after Autodesk bought it from Alias, they're, they're starting to do this cross-platform thing and get people to be able to jump back, you know, back and forth if need be. So, so yeah, um, it, it just, it seems more technical to me. I don't know why. I just, I feel like I have more um, not creative control, creative freedom, I feel. Like, I see people in Studio Max constantly working uh, in, in this format. Constantly working in this format, um, in this uh, workspace. And it drives me nuts. Like, if I'm, <laughs> if I'm not working in perspective, 
Uh, now, I mean, when I need to do something profile-wise, you know, I'll, I'll sure I'll, I'll hop into an orthographic view. But yeah, most of the time I'm working in this. I just don't see a lot of Studio Max people doing that. So, so yeah, um, Maya works for me. And with my LT, it's cheap. It's uh, I pay like two fifty a year. It's legal. So if I release anything commercial, you know, that was made with it, I'm good to go. It just works. This personal um, preference, you know, a buddy of mine, he uses Moto. Um, I tried Moto. He tried to convince me it's super easy at modeling. I can see some of the stuff in it being easy, but uh, again, it's just not for me. It's not for me. Maybe one day. Maybe one day I'll switch to something else. Let's see here. All right, so uh, let's just take a second here, pull up wireframe real quick. So basically that, let me pull these, these uh, I guess I'd call them janky teeth out. They're my starter teeth. And we'll just pull those out real quick here. Again, they're, they're more chiclet, obviously, because I started with the cube and just quickly beveled. Again, it was for the the screenshot I took because I've been working on on uh, getting Jack uh, ready for uh, for UV. So anyway, as you can see here, you want to taper towards the top because how the tooth uh, is exposed. Like you don't have to do the full. I don't even know the the proper anatomy name of it, but I mean, the tooth is like bulky at the top, right? Um, I believe, wait, yeah, no, no, it's the other way around. Yeah, it's bulky at the bottom, tapers to the top, goes into the gum, connects to the root. Um, so, so when I was doing this, you know, a quick way that you could fix this up is just to start tapering here. You know, just taper at the top, white at the base. But again, we're not gonna do that. Um, and we're not just gonna go through here and copy Syndrome's teeth uh, because that would just not be fun. But that that's a good quick way to, to go in and, and just do that real quick. Um, it's just to do Q model. Man, it's dry in here. So, Let's go ahead and start actually working on his teeth. Now, what I want to do, uh, and I didn't have a chance to do it today, is actually go out and find like some crazy teeth here. Let me look. Just do teeth, image search. I'm doing it off screen right now just because I was like, eh, I don't want to come up with something that uh, is inappropriate or disgusting or gross be surprised uh, doing this kind of work and, and finding uh, in image searches some of the stuff you find it's it's not it's not pretty um, this is a pretty good picture here um, this, uh, no actually I don't like that you always find that they're connected to to some kind of dental uh, website I just uh, yeah that's pretty good so so what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna expand this back out just move syndrome buddy over there and we'll just come in here and like I said you can go up here you can do this here you can use the menu here if you want you can come over here to the shelf and just click that I hit F to focus and uh, we'll just drag him up here, I'm heading up again. Focus, frame, we called it focus so long ago. It's basically frame the object. So that's what the F key is for. Um, and I'll, I'll talk here uh, when we're ready uh, how to, to curb these using a, a Venn deformer. That's uh, pretty easy to do, so. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of create each tooth first in in the line that they would be in. So, you, 
getting a um, getting it uh, Pixar like it, it's an exaggeration it's a caricature of the character you're working on so there's going to be certain aspects of the character that are exaggerated um, and in Buddy's case it's his massive like Jay Leno chin right or syndrome um, and so he's got these big eyes big cheeks huge jaw and then of course he's got these these big teeth now if you look at a lot of characters even in non-Pixar films they're going to have over exaggerated teeth because because when they when the character smiles just these big massive teeth so let me uh let me pull up a, another picture here um <laughs> uh let's see here bob's boss incredibles um he's got the voice of the inconceivable guy i think um but uh he typically has a great smile that shows all all of his teeth i don't i don't see him here though let me um try to yeah i guess i guess this is pretty good um we're not gonna go for like crazy realism here let me just switch Let's see if this works oh it, yeah it worked um so so here what you see is basically bob's boss from the incredibles and i know it's kind of blurry sorry about that it's just the one i found um, but basically, look, I mean, he's, he doesn't have anatomically correct teeth, right? They're just kind of like the old carnival, you know, where you throw the, well, some of you might not be old enough to know what a carnival is. Um, but you have these like games at carnivals where you would go and you'd like throw, you know, balls or you take like a, a BB gun and shoot out teeth and faces and stuff like that. I'm super dating myself here. Um, and that's basically the kind of idea. He's just got these like cube, square, rectangle, like sharp edged teeth, but they were smart enough to put them in different angles, you know? Um, and, and that's, that's kind of what we're going for. Uh, just not his. So let me go ahead and close that out. There we go. And there's Buddy again, Hold Syndrome. Uh, let's go ahead and switch back. Again, first episode, so, so this is kind of new to me. I've been trying to practice and get this going. But uh, all right, let's go ahead. Let's see, how can I get better at creating textures? Um, huh. Yeah, textures. Now I'm not laughing at you, I'm laughing at the question of, of the the textures itself because um, texturing has always been something that I've struggled with and um, understanding shady, shader networks and all that I mean there's there's a reason why um, there are so many different disciplines when it comes to digital content creation there's modelers, there's lighters, there's technical artists, um, there's texture artists, there's, you know, render artists. There's, there's, there's so many different aspects and disciplines for what we do that um, some people just steer towards something and they become stronger at it or they just like it more. Um, what I'm getting to is I like modeling. I like seeing something come to life. Now, at the same time, it can really come to life with texturing, right? Because um, a lot of times just a model can look flat, you know, unless you start doing lighting and rendering. But that's why there's eye rays and key shots and V rays and, you know, mental ray and uh, all those kind of things that can make just a static object with light and shadow look great. But when it comes to textures, that is something I always struggled with. And for the longest time, 
I, I, I avoided it. Honestly, I did. I avoided it. I would, um, have someone else do my texturing for me or, or something. Cause I, for the longest time I would in the pipeline concept art modeling or concept art sculpting modeling. Um, and then I get the textures and I just, the UV process was tedious until you, you had programs like Hedis UV layout come out. I think 3d coat has like an auto UV process. Um, don't use it. I mean, you can just do it yourself. It's tedious. It takes time, play some music, just do it. You'll know it's right when it's done. But then you get to the texture process and, and nowadays texturing can actually be easy. It really can. Um, if I, I was just doing an object that, um, I died for some water. I should just have like those old hats, you know, that people like beer cans that I can dating myself here and the straws come down. I just had like two things of water sitting right there. Um, anyway, uh, let's see here. I'm trying to bring up a render I recently did uh, over on my art station. You, you guys can check out my art station at artstation.com. What is it? Uh, artist Papilati. Um, I should switch. It would help if I switched. Um, so this, when it loads, there we go. You can see it. Okay. So this is a radio that I was designing. Um, I did some concept work and eventually just did the radio. Uh, 3D model to my LT. You can actually, uh, you can see the, the URL up here. If you wanted to just check it out directly, um, I will copy and just paste it here. Hopefully it lets me, there we go. Um, and you can check it out. I got a Marmoset viewer in here. You can spin it around. This is an Unreal Engine rendering. And then here's the Maya LT. Now the question about the texturing part, right? Um, this, I think it looks good. It may, may not look good. I don't know. Um, I, I have such confidence issues with my texturing that you asking this question is fantastic. Um, so I've struggled with texturing so long, how to create better textures, things like that. You look at this and you're, if I was somebody else, I'd be like, well, he knows what he's doing. Substance painter by algorithmic makes this stuff so easy to do that when, when I started using it and I started using Quixel first, um, Quixel, is odd it's basically a program that integrates into photoshop and i never never really liked it or just i didn't there's problems with it uh i can only do basic textures like rock wood and glass yeah well i mean just doing doing something like this again Go to the YouTube um, tutorials made by the algorithmic guys. Go to the channels. Um, Substance Painter is so cheap. I mean, right now, I think uh, the Steam sale, uh, the Steam Summer sale has the Substance Indie Pack on sale right now. I think Substance Painter is $99 or something like that. Um, watch the videos and you could do something like that. Like, I didn't, I didn't make the textures. Right, because they're procedural. Right, I just copy YouTube. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I get it totally. Right, yeah, absolutely. And um, you know, you'll you'll get better over time. You'll understand. It's almost like having a photographer's eye. Right, not everybody can go out and take great photos, even though Apple would like to think you can with their iPhone, oh, anybody can take a fantastic photo. No, it still requires the eye. You have to have that eye. Same thing goes for this stuff. Like over time, you will learn to be able to critique your work and know what's bad, what's not bad in the sense of, as long as you just start to build up the confidence and you look at something, does it look right? 
you know, and it's not in the same light that, like, if you're looking at human anatomy and you're just like, oh, man, that doesn't look right. The proportions are way off. No, this is just like, okay, does it look right? No, there's something wrong here. There's something wrong with there. You nitpick your work. The best thing to do is to do it. Can real life images be used as textures? A lot of people did that for the longest time, honestly. And just... They would um, take pictures and then map them onto onto uh, in in the games. You know, uh, you can't do that anymore. Like everything that you see here, none of that. Everything is procedurally generated, and, and you'll you'll learn that um, as you go along. Now, if you anything you look at, it's it's crazy, man. Like. Um, I, I'd love to bring up a video right now, but there, there's videos out there for a program called, called Marvelous Designer. And it's a cloth simulation, like, clothing program. And it's, it's awesome, it's super powerful. And <laughs> as soon as you, like, send that stuff over to Keyshot, the fabric shaders and the textures they come up with, like, it's insane. And I'm just like, like doing this, like I was just like plopping textures in, using polygon fill, and I'm just like filling them in. I'm like, if I tried to do this 10 years ago, no way. I, I'd have to do sort of what you're considering, which is, you know, I'd go find an old radio like that. I would take the picture and map it. Sometimes you can do that. But the problem is that we have renders now, renderers game engines, renderers that will actually look look the texture information in that shading network for that for that material and it knows how to render it correctly. If you try to take something that has lighting built into it already, it has shadows applied to it, um, you might be able to get the environment to look right. Like if you had the lighting in the scene match perfectly with how the lighting is displayed on how you're applying it to whatever object or, or item you have, it might look okay. You could sort of fake it, but as soon as you try to turn the shadows that are baked in, the, the highlights from the lighting are baked in, as soon as you turn it, it's going to become flat and you, you're just going to lose it. Whereas with with a, a PBR material, you know, you, you're not gonna have that problem. And uh, all the engines are gonna use it. Unity, Unreal, um, Crytek engines, they're, they're all using procedurally based rendering now. That's what the PBR is. So take the time and, and do the research. You know, find out, you know, and it's confusing. It's going to be confusing. Like, uh, uh, algorithmic uses the standard um, PBR, uh, uh, what is it? Metallic roughness is their, their standard when they open it. Now, that works great in Unreal Engine. Um, do you use ArtStation for your portfolio? Uh, ArtStation is one of the sites I use. Um, depends on what kind of work you use or you do um our station uh just came about in the last two to three years um before that uh you could have some of your work posted on cgsociety.org um if you're a concept artist there's um conceptart.org i mean there's so many sites out there the best site that i can recommend for anyone to actually get started on if you're not already is polycount like get on polycount and like become a member be nice to people and and there's actually a ton of stuff you can learn here if you're not already on here um just asking because i got gotta have one for next year like an online portfolio or do you just like have to have a portfolio for next year.
keep forgetting about the delay. <laughs> Yeah, the portfolio site is mostly just for um, people to be able to see your work online and be able to find you. Uh, Adobe hosts their own portfolio site. Uh, what is that? What is it? Behance. Behance.net or is it .com? Yeah, it's .net. Okay, and this is by Adobe. Um, and and uh, I have a, another portfolio on here too and for some reason my video capture is really messing up let me see if I can't can fix that real quick my key my key is not not behaving whoa losing me my green screen's messed up ah. I don't uh, I don't know the software the green should have worked. Oh, there's my green screen. Now you can see it. All right. Let me close this. Um, oh, wow. Now it looks even worse. <laughs> I like my head. I do not have my studio lighting in here right now. It's, uh, it's in another room because I'm transitioning to a different floor. So let me see here. I'm trying to find it. It's... Uh, it's not terrible. You can actually like see animation through my the highlight on my head. This is terrible lighting. Don't judge me by my lighting. <laughs> um, back to what we're doing here. Uh, so basically, yeah, there's a bunch of different sites, um, and when it comes to textures, just keep practicing, man. Textures can be. I think it's next to animation is the hardest thing. Although you're probably gonna have a bunch of light lighting uh, fanboys out there, like say, lighting's a bitch, and it is. Like your scene will never look right. Nothing will look right without lighting. So don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Uh, all right. So as I was saying, we are just going to um, do sort of a row of these things, and uh, we'll just get this done. I'll we'll just. Get it done. I wish this thing would ping me when somebody would uh, text. Otherwise, people are just like sitting over here. Hey, is he gonna answer me? Yes. Unlike Twitch, that will like read it out loud or whatever. I don't know if you have to be a partner for that though. So let's see here. So as I was showing you before, the uh, Bob's boss, his uh, his teeth are kind of like this, and you can basically use this for a game especially if you're not going to see it um i'm going to leave that in there we'll we'll do cleanup at the end here so let's do two front teeth real quick just like that and i just duplicated it and some people's teeth will actually um come together some will have a gap some will come together, some will have a lot of space, um, some will angle out, and again, it's uh, it's just gonna be preference. How do you wanna do it? Usually with it being a hero, you're gonna have perfection, you know, beautiful wavy hair, you know, it's, in, my, in the case of my character, you know, he's, he's He's eventually going to have this perfect mustache, you know, and he's just going to, you know, the square jaw, things like that. So he, his teeth are going to be pretty good. That's that's basically what I'm getting at. Now, if it's a villain, you know, he can have really messed up teeth or uh, sharp teeth, things like that. And uh, you can do things like that with your villains. But typically your hero, he's going to he's going to be pretty spot on when it comes to. Uh, his looks. So let's go ahead and duplicate this again. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Let me make sure I'm. There we go. So again, I'm not using symmetry right now because I don't want it symmetrical. 
All right, so so you got your front teeth here, and then get your I don't even know what these are called. Where where are bipolars? I don't even remember. Or bicuspids? Yeah, I think it's bicuspids or something like that. Then you're gonna have your canines. Um, again, I'm just uh, adjusting verts, just how I see fit. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. So, I mean, if he's been in, like, let's say he's been in a fight, right, and he's got a chip too, if you could do that here. Say, so, oh yeah, his tooth's been chipped. We'll do more adjustments as we go along. I just, <coughs> excuse me, just want to make sure that uh, you get it pretty much going now. Let's see. That's okay. And we're just going to make these a little more narrow. Kind of like that. And let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to do a multi cut. I just want to kick this out just a bit here. Something like that. I don't want to make this too sharp. Um, I was just filling mine for a second there just to see how worn down it was. Because again, the older you are, the more it's going to get worn down. Um, I am going to start to do a little cleanup here, uh, optimize wise. There we go. And now I have, wait a minute, maybe that's why I kept it. Nope, it doesn't matter. Uh, oh, switch back, thank you. And what I want to do is get rid of this and go on here. There we go. Yeah, okay. This is all going to be gone, so I'm not worried about doing that. And it doesn't really matter because it's all going to have like a planar layout. It doesn't matter how you lay these out. You know, it's and when it gets into the game, it's going to be triangulated anyway. So you could even do that if you wanted to. Doesn't really matter. Let's see. Okay, and I want to do the same thing over here. And again, I'm not I'm not looking at the other side really. I just want to make it as organic feeling as possible. Let's go ahead and do another bevel here. Now there is a, a website, uh, not a website, a channel on YouTube that uh, I don't agree entirely with what the guy is saying when it comes to the um, his modeling and his uh, line work, edge work. Sorry, not line work. He's he'll he'll tell you that um, doing what I'm doing now it, it doesn't. It doesn't matter um, because as long as the engine uh, renders it correctly based on the normal information that you're applying to it, uh, it it's not going to matter. As long as you got you know your quads, um, he says you don't have to split this up. But every time I go into Unreal, I get really bad normal information, uh, especially rendering out, uh, not rendering, exporting out as an FBX. If you export out as an FBX, it, it gives you terrible, nasty normals. Uh, but when, and I'm talking about like you, you're going in there and you're looking like there's so many different ways you can do this. Uh, well, the game exporters off actually. Let me, Let me check here. Yeah, all right, let me refresh, there we go. So even when you use the game exporter, which lets you do all kinds of fun stuff here, and you know, you can change your up access uh, or axis for like Unreal, it does not use Y up, um, 
you can set all this up for whatever engine you're going to send it to. You can save your own um, profiles and whatnot. But even if I use a game exporter, an exporter, and I can even change it down to 2014-15, uh, it still has like terrible normals. And it doesn't matter what settings I use, it, it does. But if I export out using almost the exact same settings, it uh, the normals are fine. So, and I've reported that to Autodesk just to let them know, hey, there's there's something going on with your stuff. You might want to look at it. Let me go ahead and... It's so quiet. I'm so used to... I'm always counting my edges. I'm like, one, two, three, four. Yup, good. Um, again, it's... Um, it's quiet. I'm so used to having music on that uh, it's, it's it's a little nerve wracking. Usually with the, when I do tutorials, which I have a lot of tutorials, they're just not uploaded to my channel. Um, stupid um. I usually will do them in real time and then reprocess them, speed them up a little bit, just like everyone else does, and then talk back over them. And then that way I can um, use different music and whatnot that I create or, or find or use from YouTube's library, which is so kind. I, I, I wish that they could integrate it somehow into the streaming process. You know, you, you go through and you're like, oh, hey, look, this is, you know, taking a... And that, this is going to take an hour. So let's play this music for an hour. So anyway, let's get back to what we were doing here. Uh, so that's pretty good. I don't have a problem with that. That looks fine. Let's, let's work on the next one here. And I'm just going to use this cube right here. Ah, I'm so used to going curved. All right. So what we can do here is we can do a multi-cut. I'm just gonna go right down the middle there. I'll just split this up just like so. And we'll pull up a canine comes out a little bit like so just a little bit and it will come to a point let me see how bad this looks do that and I'll pull this back here yeah that's pretty bad let's not collapse that we'll just make it smaller and we'll pull this back like so Okay. Let's do something like that. Okay. Right. And this little dude. Um, I'm going to flip him. You're still going to have some sense of symmetry. So, and I'm just thinking about the gum. Yeah, we'll leave that like that. That's fine. Now I'm going to take this and move it over here. Like so. Looks fine. And we're just going to change this ever so much because, again, our canines, they're not going to be too different. Just want to do something like that. 
And I'm going to move these guys up just a hair. Thinking about how that's going to fall. Feel like that. Okay, so we're going to do a quick test. We're just going to make sure that these are all going to behave. So I'm going to group them. I'm going to recenter my pivot here. And we'll call them, I don't know. Let's call them teeth. And I'll just say final because the other teeth are called teeth too. And now we're going to test the look of them. So I'm going to go 90 in the Y and I think 90 in the Z. Let me, let me see here. Uh, whoop. Oh, let's not do that. Let me come back. There we go. wrong tested this earlier just to make sure it would work there we go okay yeah we just want to make sure it uh, they've been right hmm <laughs> something just isn't I don't know, I feel like I should put a chip right here. Alright. Let's take this back down. And that's basically what I'm going to do. And we'll just put a segment in there. Just raise it up just... Whoa! If I can choose the right one. And... I will go to vert mode, target weld, and just move that up there like that. And it's pretty good. Again, you know, he's been through a lot of stuff. Maybe some shrapnel popped up, and uh, he took it right in the tooth. Poor Jack. Let's see here. Let's... Again, I'm just kind of moving stuff around. Trying to get it away from the asymmetrical nature of it. We can get it sort of something like that. And I'm offsetting right now. Just working on that part. Hmm. Yeah, let's do that. That looks pretty good. Canines usually always pop out just a bit, but I'm thinking about how they were when I curved it. So let's do that. And let's try this again. Let me let me make sure I save it here. There we go. Um I'm going to go ahead and store this in the shelf. Uh, for those of you who are kind of new to, to Maya, um, you can store any menu item uh, from the menu up here on the shelf. So I'm just going to snap this off so you can see. So it's not here. And if you, um, I got to think about this, control shift, because I'm actually using an Apple keyboard. <laughs> uh, because I come from a Mac background, don't hate. I, uh, I actually have been using the Mac keyboard and I use a program called Sharp Keys. And Sharp Keys allows me to remap everything because I don't know how you guys deal with the control. You know, on an Apple keyboard, it's very simple. You know, it's an Apple keyboard, you would just hit in, in Mac on OS 10, you would just hit, you know, boop you know, or whatever, you use your thumb 
to do it and it's very natural whereas on a pc you're like reaching back with your pinky to <laughs> which is very uncomfortable because you're doing it all the time you're reaching back and hitting that control key and then doing something well that just it feels awful to me so even in windows uh i i use a program called sharp keys and it allows me to and it's free and it allows me to swap the control on the option key and, or control on the apple key which is the command key and allows me to um do all the fun stuff i wanted to anyway uh tangent aside so you just want to hit control shift if you're on a pc or command shift if you're on a mac and then just click on whatever the menu item is so there you go and see now it's in the shelf if i save this just like that it says no changes because this is written um into uh, the actual shelves uh, system so if we close it and then relaunch better be there otherwise it's going to look silly um it's supposed to be there now sometimes it, if you've done a bunch of work you haven't saved anything and you haven't closed maya down and brought it back up so we can save its preferences uh any additions you've made to the shelf will be gone and there's no python in here and uh i think yeah you can use mel there's a lot of mel scripts that you can still use in lt but no python which sucks because there's a lot of awesome plugins out there um like zbrushes go z you can't use it because there's no python in lt please autodesk if you happen to see this put python in lt it's not hard it's code just do it anyway uh let's go ahead and load that back up all right and see there it is in our shelf again so go in here press up to grab the group and we'll reapply this and now that we know it's y and z we'll go ahead and test it again something like that i feel like and I really want to say this is a bicuspid, and I'm sure you, you guys can say, no, it's not. It's not a bicuspid. Uh, but now I'm curious. I want to know. <laughs> I keep calling it a bicuspid, but I'm sure I'm very, very wrong because uh, I always get teeth uh, wrong. Bicuspid. Let's see here. Bicuspid. That's it. What? Maybe, uh, yeah, a tooth. It brought up some like heart valve stuff and I'm just like, what? Let's see here, did I get it right? Ah, no, no, this is a uh, lateral incisor. Yeah, so uh, let me see here, where is it? Yeah, uh, this tooth here is a lateral incisor. Maybe I should just brought up the picture first. Um, what, what did I think was a bicuspid? Oh my God. Why did I keep, I don't know why I kept saying that. What the hell's a bicuspid? <laughs> uh, sound off and, and make fun of me. Um, that'd be great. Anyway, so yeah, we're, we're not gonna do all the teeth. You're not gonna see all the teeth in, in the game, even in promotional photos. I mean, just, if you look at what a standard smile width is gonna be, you're only gonna see so many teeth, especially at the size they are. And with the mouth sack, um, being the size it is inside, um, which I will probably end up um, adjusting the size a little bit more um, the closer I get to a final final mouth here. Um, the uh, the teeth will be fine because you're not going to see them all, even on a full smile. You know, we can. Uh, I'm gonna delete the history, and and that'll lose us the, uh, the spline. I I don't even know what that's. Um, the deformer will go away. Let me add teeth there so we can see them. And I'm just gonna make them a little smaller. And then you can see 
where the mouth sac is inside. Again, my mouth sac's a little in need of some work. I was using deformers on it, and I don't remember when, uh, uh, on the head itself to match the sculpt a little bit more. I kept fighting it, and I ended up, uh, it would appear that I've ended up manipulating the mouth sac and not in, in the best way. Looks like I accidentally merged some verts down here. Well, I'll have to clean that up. Not in this episode. So anyway, let me just pull these teeth in. We'll see how many we have to end up doing. And I'm gonna offset it again. Symmetry is bad. Asymmetry is the key to everything. Everything. Dun, dun, dun. I hope uh, YouTube doesn't get me on that for some kind of copyright. Just like saying the happy birthday song. All right, so this looks pretty good. Again, the mouth sack's gonna be in there. I see, that looks, that looks pretty good. Just trying to see how many teeth I might have to just do. The, the overall size looks good, I think. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't, because you can really cheat when the mouth opens. Because uh, you can just like render partial, like the inside, the inside wall, and then just the underneath. Again, optimizing for polygon count. You would just need to do the inside like that. So I say that looks pretty damn good. I'm I'm actually not. I don't even think I want to uh, to mess with the curve because I think that looked pretty damn good too. Let me uh, let me turn X-ray on. And we'll see. Let me pull this up. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and do this. Isolate. There we go. Uh, well, actually, actually, I think it needs to go. I think it needs to curve a little more, maybe. Yeah, it needs to curve a little more, just a little more. That's okay. Undo all the mouth sack stuff. I don't care. All right. Let, let's see. Yeah, just, just like that. Just seeing how much I can, you can move this handle here and it'll adjust the influence on the objects. Yeah, and you see right away, you're gonna, you're gonna notice that you're not gonna see the rest of the molars back here, you're just not going to. Or what are they called? There's there's two premolars and then there's a first, second, and third molar. Nobody counts the wisdom tooth. Yeah, I'd say that I say that looks pretty good. Yeah. Let's uh let's go ahead and select the group. We're gonna delete history now. When, when I'm clicking this button, this is actually over here under delete all by type and then history, in case you were wondering. I'm gonna take us out of x-ray view and I'm a big visual guy, so if I have a material that I can just assign color-wise, I will. So yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. I'm gonna actually just angle this back just a bit. I don't want him too perfect. As far as a smile, there we go. I mean, he can smile, but I don't want it to be like, he, he's the hero, but he's not the pretty boy that we would assume that we would have for today's time, you know? I don't know if you guys have ever looked at like old films you know, for any of you youngins that might be watching uh, but they're, uh, 
the old standards of, of who was attractive versus today's standards, uh, I don't think a lot of those actors would fly by today's standards like, at all. So, um, sorry for, our, for all those poor souls out there that just would not cut it. They would end up being character actors if they were any good, but, you know, some people are like, um, Humphrey Bogart, you know, uh, Cagney, Hudson, you know, all these people were good looking guys, good looking guys. And I'm just like, same goes for, for the women, you know, Grace Kelly, gorgeous for a time, but would not fly in today's world, just wouldn't. So sadly, it is a uh, it is a world full of. Uh, I won't go there. It was it was getting dark. All right, let's see here. Still looking pretty good. Uh, overall shape is fine. Again, um, your your tooth basically behind your canine, which is the first premolar. Uh, we could do that just to be on the safe side. And that's, it's basically like a really skinny version of the, uh, the lateral incisor. So I'm just gonna pull that in here. I'm going to center it a little bit. And we're going to just adjust this here. And I'm just going to skinny it up. Again, it's going to be more frontal towards the canine. And I'm going to change. Oh, come on. There are still some uh, issues trying to use a, an Apple keyboard. There we go. Yeah. And I'm gonna go ahead and freeze that. Duplicate it. Oh, hit it back. Just like that. Bring it over here. And again, we're just gonna modify it just a bit. I don't want it to curve in too much actually. And I'm going to freeze transformations again. Just like that. You can actually drop it down just a bit. Okay. So now that that's set, I'm actually gonna twist this around, bring it to the back and in just a bit. Now I'm gonna take these verts and move them. Something like that, yeah. I just want more of a natural, natural gap here. Again, a lot of this is gonna get covered up with our very, very, very simple gum line that we're gonna put in here. Let me just move this to the back. Okay. <sighs> I may have done it too much. There we go. Something like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. It's water time. So now what we're gonna do is pretty straightforward gonna use a cube um, actually what we could do is just use one of these and I'm gonna frame and uh, a trick you can use for those that don't know is averaging the verts um, and and what that's gonna do is just give you an average uh, vertical or uh, not vertical uh, vertice location 
um, base it within the coordinate system on screen. And we're just going to start to move it around here. And I'm going to do some squishing. Again, trying to get a molar. And let's take this, move this over here. want to make sure it looks right when he uh, and again we're you're not gonna see this you're not gonna see this um, I'm trying to think probably won't see this we can adjust this bird here I mean here um, where we can pull this back and that's not gonna matter there we go so now we can for example you would do all of this um, yeah, okay. And that's all you would need because that's all you would see. You wouldn't see anything else. And you could probably just make it more like that. Okay. And we can make it bigger because that uh, is going to be bigger, something like that. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, there's another tooth in there. It's a second premolar. And it's actually, here, let's pull this back just a bit. It's more like this. So we'll just flip this around. And it went black because of its normals. So we're just going to reverse the normals. There we go. Again, we'll check the smile just to make sure that everything is uh, is looking right as far as when his uh, mouth is open. Something like that. We can actually just shift this out just a bit. And we'll add another shift to it. You're not going to see a lot of this. And again, we're going to optimize it here um, before we're done. Want to make sure that when he opens his mouth, it's uh, it's gonna look okay here. It's gonna go so fast, so often. I mean, unless he had like this, you know, slow motion of the mouth opening, then it's gonna be a problem. But it should be fine. Okay, let me get rid of our uh, original stand-ins there. Okay, something like that. And I'm just gonna switch real quick so you guys can see my screen on the other screen. There you go, this is what I'm looking at. And um, again, using dental references to, uh, to make our teeth here. Nothing fancy. Anybody could find them. And again, I'm, I'm not a dentist, obviously. I, I actually hate dentists. You know, and, and unless they fix uh, my pain that I'm having. Damn dentists. And they charge a fortune. I mean, honestly. Seriously. I know it's a, it's a disgusting job, right? But... If you guys ever need to get a root canal and a crown, that shit's two grand. That's insane. That's like two visits to the ER. <laughs> That's like a grand a pop every time you go to the ER. Ridiculous. And then they're gonna, oh, well, I'm not gonna do politics. I, I promised. I promised the wife I wasn't gonna do politics. So I'm not gonna do politics. Um, let's see here. There we go. Again, I we're gonna do a lot of tweaking. So this may be beveled here. 
but on that back side we're gonna really clean that up just like we did this uh, this molar here again I'm just making sure that if you be smiles big you're gonna only see so much perspective there we go okay and these this here I mean you could go to the trouble of putting a bunch of polygons in here but this can be easily just normal map so I'm not even I'm not or painted in I'm not even gonna worry about that and so uh, first molar second molar let's see let's just do one and then two if we even need it I'm just gonna move this gotta think about the bite don't waste too much time doing stupid shit like I'm doing I'm so anal about things. Uh -huh. um, let's see, let's bring this down. Nobody's gonna have a perfect bite. I don't know if uh, if you've ever talked to your dentist, uh, they they are like, oh, we gotta shave this tooth down. We gotta do this over here. And, Oh, it hurts. Well, that's because your bite's wrong. You need to fix that. Yeah, whatever. Again, I don't like this. Whatever. Okay, let's see. This guy might be a little... Second premolar, yeah. And so then we're going to do... I probably should have froze transformations first. Oh, wait, hold on. Did I not? Is that not? Oh, I didn't add it. Oh, maybe I did. Is it this one? No, oh, there it is. I thought it was an FT. Okay. And you're not, you're not going to see this, but we'll go back through here and, and do these in a minute. Let's go ahead and delete this one, this, 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 and freeze, duplicate, we're just going to scale this, and, uh-oh, uh-oh, that's weird, I don't know why it, Huh. Why I did that. Let's see if it'll be nice. There we go. Just reset that transformation. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Let's go ahead and just grab this edge. I'm going to move this up. I think it's I'm simply doing this from a visual standpoint. Like, I don't like the way it looks. We're skipping the entire back tooth back here, the third pre, uh, the third molar. I'm not caring about um, changing the uh, the variation too much. Again, it's you're barely gonna see it. All right, I'm going to this back in a bend I think it's gonna get nasty though probably shouldn't have done that hold on 90 90 well let's see how how bad it's gonna get that's not too bad yeah I wanted something more like that okay Right. Um, I might adjust the height on this. Um, history, let's go ahead and move you guys down just a bit. And it's just something like that. Okay. All right. 
Okay, now that we've done the, the top, I'm going to do something I said don't do. But that's okay. I'm just doing this because we are already in two hours now, but most of the work has been done. And this is this is the good stuff. So um, the lateral incisor here at the bottom is actually um, a lot of times uh, bigger than the smaller front teeth. We're really going to scale these down to something like this. We're going to bring these in. Like so, I'm gonna start to uh, to turn these, and that'll help compensate the gapping that's occurring there. And we can center the pivot on that just to have it behave a little better. Um, also, I'm going to account for the bite. Typically, the way our teeth grow, um, they they want to fit into each other, so. Like this. Something like that. Okay. And because the other side is pretty much the same, we're just gonna take these guys, freeze their transformation, duplicate, scale, and well, how about we group them and then, oh, hold on, I forgot to center pivot. We can actually move this more where it's in the middle. Oh, I was like, why isn't that working? Okay, duplicate. Maybe just move this back just a bit. Switch back. Did I duplicate it? Yeah. <laughs> there. And again, they're typically going to be a little smaller, like so, and they they usually sit in just inside. So when they're closed, oh, hold on, I'm going to clean this up real quick because this is out of control. Teeth. You have all these subgroups here. See, there we go, and those are fine, so just like that. So he's gonna open his mouth, and we. This is okay, um, simply because what we can say is, um, it hit his tooth, and you know he was like, ah, you know, and it, it hit, and so the top and bottom would be chipped. Um, what I'm going to do now uh, is just extend these out just a bit. We're just going to move these up in here. I'm going to start moving some of these around just to fill it a bit better. Something like that. Don't want any interpolation. Oh, here's some right here. Um, so what I'm going to do is just move it up like this, maybe move it out just a bit, something like that. All right. So we got the teeth, we'll call these teeth bottom. Call these teeth 
top. Let's kill the history. Let's freeze it. Center it. Same thing here. History. Freeze it. Center it. There we go. All right. And then we can just say for this group. Oop. Group. Let's see if it gets mad. Yeah, it does. Okay. Stupid namespace. Um, teeth. Uh, there's so many different ways. You could do like group like that. Some people do it different ways. That's all I'm going to do. Center, freeze. There we go. All right. So there's our teeth. Now what we're going to do, because right now, let's make this big again. Um, I want to make sure that everybody's behaving here yeah just checking my polygon count right now because without this extra head that i made just for this presentation we're around 5700 which is fine i got so many i have so much um more uh polygons i can use if if i wanted to so, I have ample space. That's good. All right, there we go. Okay. That's just enough. Do that. History, history, center, good. There we go. Okay. Um, I think everything's good that way. You're not going to see that. You're going to see this. Let's go ahead. And I'm going to check this rotation here. Something like that. All right. Okay. See, you're not going to see it. Some of these you will. So I'm just going to move some birds around. That way it doesn't look so skinny. Something like that. That's fine. Move this like that. There we go. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right. Again, we're just doing the teeth tonight, and we're almost done. Okay, now we're gonna optimize. And again, we do not need faces where you can't. Whoa, whoa, whoa! We don't need faces where you can't see it. So. Uh, all right, component mode. Here we go. Well, here, I want to make sure. So, I forgot to set the upper jaw rotation. Back into object mode. And let me adjust this. Ah. Let me adjust the local rotational axis. There we go. All right, so we'll just say if he's like, you know, ah, like crazy, right? Okay, so this is basically what you can and can't see. You're not, you got to be careful with these, but this should be good. So we can get rid of this, 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 what? Forgot to go into component mode. Hold on. Alright, let me select all these. Switch back. Ah, oh, come on. There we go. Just fight me. Alright. Okay. I am going to leave that. The edge. can see that one but we can get rid of this one um, yep that's fine I just want to make sure that there's nothing that can uh, from the side you can't see that this this um, same thing goes for this 
probably not gonna see that. Just checking. It's it's not gonna hurt. We can keep that. That's so little. Let's see, let's get rid of this, this. Yeah, you might see that based on the side. Get rid of these. I gotta see that. Get rid of that. Gotta make some adjustments here. Just to give these teeth just a little more, a little more, there we go, okay, bottom, ah, there, how's my time, ah, two hours, crap, I was going to try to cut it off at the two hour mark, so YouTube didn't get all pissy. All right. Get rid of that. This. This. Save real quick, and we're gonna just hold on. Wow, that thing is fighting me. I thought my fingers on it. There we go. Uh, I'm using reset transformation to reset its uh, original location. And we're just gonna center pivot. History center pivot. Probably should have done that first. Center pivot and freeze. freeze. All right. So there we go, and we got it down to two hundred sixty-four polygons, which is fine. And we're just gonna kind of start to move them into place. And I'm just gonna take a gander here. Let's go back into x-ray mode. See what I meant by the mouth sack. I'm gonna have to make sure it looks right. And again, I still have to be perfectly centered. Smile. I'm gonna expand the influence, and we will kick in some symmetry. I'll just pull these back. Really get these smile lines working. There we go. Okay. I'm just going to turn on wireframe. I like wireframe. I just do. And we'll smooth that up. I just do the other one because I, I can. Uh, smooth. Smooth preview and all that. So that uh, that's the teeth. I, I think they look pretty damn good. You know, he got, he got shot in the, the mouth there. Um... I might raise this. Whoa, 
smooth preview. You turn off soft selection on there you go. Just, just get it up into view like that. Yeah, that looks great. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> that's uh that's us modeling Jack's teeth. And let me go ahead and end this the way I started it. I don't know why even though I tell the camera to turn off. So yeah, um, just to recap, we uh, we talked about how we wanted to um, make sure that we uh, let me switch that we we didn't want chiclet teeth, you know, um, that we wanted actual teeth that um, seem more realistic and so we we looked at some references some examples from Pixar films uh, then we actually had uh, dental uh, references to go off of we used standard cube modeling and started working out um, the shapes uh, using again the references as a, a an example then we tweaked it uh, with the goal for asymmetry because again symmetry bad asymmetry good and slowly moved each one down the row and then we used a non-linear deformer the bend um, to to wrap the teeth into the shape of the mouth sac and from there we build out little by little and eventually we got to the shapes we wanted then went back in optimized by removing polygons you will not see and uh, cleaned it up and it's now ready for UV and it looks great so thanks for watching this live show um, hopefully you can hit the like button and subscribe and hopefully see some more stuff uh, we also let me uh, bring this up we also have our our patreon page here uh, where you can follow us and, and um, hopefully you, you, you like what we're doing and, and you like the project and you can read more all about the project here on the patreon page and and donate and and support support me um, trying to make this this game that I've been passionate about for 10 years we got some great rewards I mean even a dollar a single dollar and you'll be able to play the game as soon as I have playable builds ready like you get it you get to play it and it's awesome and it was one dollar so like that you know you can just follow if you want you don't even have to donate you just follow the project there follow us on Twitter uh, we're at Papalati Games, P A P A L A T I Games, and I'm just Papalati, P A P A L A T I. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Google Plus. Uh, you can find us here. Again, just hit the subscribe button. It's uh, somewhere here. I think it's over here. And uh, hopefully, uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. All right, we're done. I wish I had some like cheers or something like that. Um, but I don't. And so it's kind of awkward to end, but that's it. Goodbye. See ya.